Me and Chris, back together, <laughs> best friends forever. <laughs> so I'm back in Australia. Yep. I came... It's been a while since we sat here and did this. <laughs> I know, I came in yesterday. I probably should have turned the light on. Do you think it's dark? Yeah, it is actually a little. I did notice that. Okay, turn the light on. Well, I can't get out. So while Chris has turned the light on, I'll make use of this time to say that I had a lot of fun um, hanging out with more people than I have time to mention right now because what I'm doing right now is all of my pickups from everything, from everywhere I went, every, oh, my hand stopped. From everywhere I went, everything I'd done, these are my pickups from the entire month and a half, two months I was there. And I am going to try and go through all of it. So I'm going to have to rush some of it. Um, I want to tell as many stories about as many of the things as possible, for example, where I got them, how I got them, how much I got them for, but for the most part I'm going to have to slam through a lot of it so this video doesn't go for an hour, because there's so much stuff, there's probably about, I don't, I don't, I don't even know, I don't even want to guess how many games, maybe like three, four hundred games. <laughs> I think it's less. I mean, there's 50 NES games alone. Okay, this, okay, it's definitely less games, maybe 200 games. Maybe. Maybe. It's still a lot of games. <laughs> a lot of games. Alright. But there's a lot of consoles as well. So I'm going to try and go through this as quick as I can. Now, a lot of the stuff, I didn't want to have anything on the table. I wanted to start with an empty table, but that wasn't possible because there's too much stuff for me to be able to easily grab. So I'll start with some interesting stuff on the table right here. This Virtual Boy right here. And by the way, a lot of this stuff is going to be spoilers for the game quest that's coming out from Portland. But, yeah, well, you know, you'll forget about it by then. This Virtual Boy here I got in Portland Retro Gaming Expo from Ricky from Retro Liberty. He cut me a really good deal on it, 40 bucks. Um, there's actually Mario Tennis in it right now, which I paid two dollars for at another stall. I got two controllers, one has the battery pack, one has the power pack, so I can both play via battery or via power. I will always play via power because it takes like six AA batteries. I've actually played the thing today and it does look really good. I enjoyed it. I, th I actually thought it would be a lot worse than what it was, so one Virtual Boy. Thea, Ricky. Um, these two things I found with Derek actually at a Goodwill um, in Seattle. They were only 12 bucks and we stood there ages waiting to find out how much they were and I was expecting like 30 when she came around the corner and said 12 bucks, I bought them right away there. Obviously for Mortal Kombat there were a couple bookends, I'm going to find somewhere nice to put them. This was at Portland Retro Gaming Expo. Now I showed this in the last pickups video so I'll just say really quickly it was 20 bucks and I bought it before they even opened. I'm not going to get it out of the box again because it was super squeaky last time. Um, this Game Boy, this is all, all complete but missing the game. I actually picked the game up for a dollar the week prior in Seattle. I bought this in Portland from Rue's Booth, from Pat the NES Punk and Rue. Um, yeah, I, I had with Rue down from $3 to $2. Um, I got an R Zone, which is pretty much the Virtual Boy, but Tiger. I'm sorry, Chris. Did you want to say something? No, I'm, I'm gonna be talking I'm, for a long time. I'm I'm just sort of enjoying it because I haven't heard these stories yet. Yeah. So Chris you know. was made messages this morning, and I said, Chris, I want to film this video <laughs> because I want to get all this stuff onto the shelf. I'm sick of it lying around. And he's like, I'm I'm hungover. I, and I was like, eat some greasy food, smash some painkillers, and come over. <laughs> And he knocked yeah. on the door without even telling me he was actually on the way. Yeah, so. I sort of forgot about that. I was <laughs> too hungover for that. I was crap. happy. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's Tiger's version of the Virtual Boy. It sucks. I actually got it for free because Terry and Tyler accidentally left it in a box that I was using to put my stuff in from Portland. Terry and Tyler from Luigi Freakout123. Fantastic channel. Go check it out. Lovely guys. I actually owe Terry and Tyler most of the trip because it was them that said to me a year ago, hey, if you ever come to Portland, we'll put you up in a hotel room and put you up, uh, I'll give you like um, the hotel, t the, the convention tickets, mm. and that's what started my, my drive of, yeah, let's get to Portland, and then it was, yeah, let's get to Retropalooza, and then it was, yeah, let's travel across across America, so they're, they're the reason why I went, they're the reason I made so many memories, really, when it comes down to it. I mean, a lot of people played their own part, like the Super Derek saying, hey, come stay with me, and then um, Scott from JHMDF saying, hey, come stay with me, so... But yeah, thank you, Terry and Tyler. I, I, I drift off way too much. You need to stop me if I drift off. Yeah, sorry. Um, a lovely, lovely subscriber caught me on the street as I was leaving Portland and gave me Secret of Mana. I mentioned that in the last video. I really appreciate it. Um, I bought Final Fight from Scott at his booth in, um, in the Wagon Wheel Flea Market from JHMDF Video Game Sellers. Mario Paint, I got that in the... Um, the video game wizard store. Um, the mouse. 
Did not open up the mouse and open. I just picked that up. I meant to. Video game wizard store, Aaron Kucharski. Um, and then Snow White. It's actually a fairly uncommon SNES game from what I can tell. Snow White in Happily Ever After. I found that at a garage sale with Scott. And then a subscriber gave me... Uh, Brendan, Brendan gave me Zelda and Secret of Evermore. He also gave me a bunch of PS2 games that I'll get to. Um, I found myself a Grey Zapper for five bucks. I was looking for one of them because I haven't seen the grey ones here. No, no, no they, never here. We don't get orange ones. Do they even, they even come out here? Probably not. I don't know. A lot of these, uh, I bought that for ten bucks. It's just an empty SNES box. I probably, I, I kind of regret buying it for ten bucks. It was one of them awkward situations where I was looking at a booth for way too long, and then I was like, ah, oh, I better buy something. Um, but once I bring it out and put a controller in there, that'll be pretty cool. I know Grimsy42 got um, the other one of these. There was two at that booth. That was at Retro Palooza. That was free. There actually is a game that goes in it. It was free because it's, it's falling apart. But once I put it in a protective plastic case, you won't even be able to tell. And Grimsy42 gave me Blades of Steel in, in the box. And I took them out of the boxes to actually flatten them out and ship them without them getting broken. So I will, I will bring them back to shape again. I'm also a huge Walking Dead fan. And at... Seattle at Pike's Place Market, which is a pretty famous market. I don't know if you've ever heard of, heard of it. Where yeah. they throw the fish. Yeah. Have you seen that? So I was, I was at that market where actually there was a comic book store and I bought a bunch of Walking Dead books because they're about 10 bucks cheaper over in America. Comics mm. suck here. They're way too expensive. One of my goals for the trip was to buy a bunch of PS3 games because they're reason free. I ended up buying Nino Cooney from Scott for 10 bucks because it was the only one that I saw that I actually wanted. That's it's, it, That doesn't come down from 30 bucks here. Uh, I got my first DS Lite at a garage sale. Me and um, Scott, we found this big lot of stuff for 40 bucks, and that was why well, it was one thing that we got, but there was a lot more than that. A lot of stuff that I'll be mentioning as I go. None of this is in any particular order either, because there's no way that would have been possible. Like, all of these Genesis games came in that lot too. Um, I'm not going to bother. There's a couple of good things in there. Cool. I bought that from Scott, Doom. I was meant to buy a 32X while I was there, but I ran out of room and money, so I can't actually play that. A very um, raging lot. Think, I'm pretty sure they are region locked. Um, the best, I collect Tiger handhelds. I've actually got a few here as well. Jurassic Park, Carnot, Pinball, and Sonic the Hedgehog. All were under five bucks. One of those, actually, Carnot and Sonic, I'm pretty sure both came from Scott Could, Aaron Kaczarski. This I found at a Goodwill for ten bucks. It is the best virtual, I mean, the best Tiger handheld I've seen. It even has a little gun, which I don't know if you'll be able to hear it if I get it out, but it does actually make a noise. Okay, the batteries have died. But it does make a noise. It's like, Pew! That's cool. And you actually shoot the screen like in a virtual cop game. Um, I don't know, there you go. You gotta slot it in like that way. Also from Aaron Kocharski's... No, actually this wasn't from Aaron's store. This was from his brother's store, Video Game Wizard 2. Yes, Video Game Wizard 2. I bought Mario VHS um, because I, I love the movie and I wanted it and I thought to have it in VHS form would be Still the best way. Still haven't seen that movie, man. It's great. I, need to I actually I have a copy of Game Chasers um, Season 1 DVD signed by everyone, but when I was at um, Jay's house, I noticed he had a co few copies lying around that had Re Regina's signature, which is Billy's wife, and most of them that went out didn't have that signature. Mine didn't have that signature, and I saw that and I was like, man, I didn't get that signature, and Jay was like, here you go. And he just gave me another copy, so now I have two, and one has Regina's signature. So I'm very, very happy about that. Thank you, Jay. And thank you, Jay, for your hospitality. You, you, you won't be watching this. Jay doesn't watch YouTube videos. <laughs> Jay, someone, someone go to Jay, Shady Jay's channel and leave a comment in the... Like, everyone go over there, Shady Jay's channel, and say, Wood said thank you for Retro Palooza, because that was an enjoyable experience. That was, it was his convention that he put on. Um, a bunch of Game Boy games... Do you want to read those out? Yeah. Those out? So Just smash them. Smash them quick. Gallagher Galaxy and Rampage Tomb Raider Jurassic Park. I should show them as well, hey? I thought you were going to show them. Things. Turtles Foot Clan. This is my favourite. Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. <laughs> That's a Zelda Ocarina of Time. That was the one. Not Ocarina of Time. Oracle of Ages. That's yeah. the one that I found uh, with Scott Squatch in the big lot. And we tested it on my vlog channel. And then 007. None of those were over a dollar because I don't pay more than a dollar for Game Boy games. That's why I bought them. Um, oh, here's a Dragon Ball plug and play. I can't quite remember where I bought this from. Oh yeah, Scott, again, at um, his um, booth. Back the first weekend that I was with Scott and I went to his uh, market, I spent, I think, like two or three hundred dollars at his booth alone. And then I, I spent maybe another fifty on Aaron stuff too. And then around the market in general, I bought a bunch of plugs because I actually lost a plug on the plane. Yeah, yeah, you said that. So I lost a bunch. I, I had to rebuy a lot of stuff and buy cologne and buy toothbrushes and stuff like that. I knocked most of that out of the market. 
I mean, this is a really nice looking like bug clothes, because you didn't bring any, <laughs> pretty much. Actually, yes. <laughs> um, so yeah, that, that was that was cool. Oh, I didn't take you through the 64 games. So we got Mario 64. Can't remember where I got that. Resident Evil 2 was given to me from another fan, um, another subscriber. I hate saying fan. <laughs> um, Sarge's Heroes, Army Men. The green case, I believe, is actually a little rarer. I think it's probably worth around more like 10 bucks. All of these were... I remember where I got that from now. It was the... Porn brokers or the, or the Cash America porn brokers right underneath Derek's apartment, which he never goes to because they never have stuff. The one time I went, I picked up that for five bucks. That was a dollar. That was a dollar. That was a dollar. And then there was a bunch of other dollar PS2 games, which I'll get to eventually. Majora's Mask holographic version. For those of you who don't know, all those of you in Australia who do know, we didn't get the holographic version here. And actually, in America, this is the more common one because it was the one that was actually commercially released first, and then they changed the label to a flat label like what we got. So picking that up, I thought that was, this was the first thing I bought in America. It was at Scott's house and I spent $15. Which Something is a, you've been talking about getting for a long time, so. And NASCAR was given that for free. Quest 64, I'm pretty sure it came in a lot of stuff that me and Scott bought for 40 bucks. And I really enjoyed this game. It was one of my childhood favorites and I know it's a horrible game. But when you have nostalgia for something, you can usually get past that. I haven't played it recently, so maybe I won't. Mm -hmm. On the road trip up to Texas from Florida, we stopped at a bunch of Cash America pawns, and this was the only thing that I got. This retails for like, just the game alone retails for 50 bucks at like, GameStop and whatnot, and this cost me 20. So I was very happy with that. I can't actually play it, because Wii is the one console I can't play games on. Although my Wii is hat, so I'm not, right. I'm not I, sure I if it will work. I guess we'll find out. Um, but my Wii is hacked, so hopefully we can figure something out there. And that was everything on the table. Yeah. <laughs> do you wanna do you wanna pull some of those controllers yeah, over? We can smash these. The sixty four controllers I got for two bucks each at a garage sale in Florida with Scott. That came in a forty dollar lot, a wave bird, it needs to be cleaned up, but it has the receiver. That is an NES Max controller which I bought for two bucks when we talked about that in the last video. I thought the controller stick was broken, but it wasn't. Um, I'll leave that there for now. The GameCube, which also gave me that four dollar lot, which I'm pretty sure got a little banged up on the way here. I still have to test it and see if it actually works. Uh, we can pull it apart. A SNES Mini, which Jeremy Stubbs, I believe is his last name, but I know Jeremy. He um he hooked me up with this for ten bucks. I haven't got any cords, but the cords are universal, so I can just switch them over. Uh, I bought a Dreamcast for my friend Ali Flanagan in Melbourne. I'm actually coming to. Oz Pax, we are coming to Oz Pax. Yeah, I'm um, going this time. This weekend, from a week from now. And Ali wanted a Dreamcast, and this is region free, and she's a really good friend. So 20 bucks, I thought, why not? I'm going to see her, so I'll give it to her. She done something to not deserve having this, and she knows what it is. But I forgive you, and I'll give it to you. Do you know about this? Yeah, it, that was from Scott as well, actually. <laughs> Scott hooked me up with that. Uh, all controllers, all hookups, Rumble Pack, and an FEMU. It was a really good deal. From Billy Mac, Billy McDonald. Billy, you are one of the greatest people I know. The first thing you said to me when I got to Retropalooza was, oh, I have something for you. And he gave me a frigging Turbo Graphics. I mean, these things are worth upwards of like 150 or something, I'm pretty sure. I have all the hookups. to have a really nice looking controller. It's in perfect working condition. It even has this little slip on the back here, which a lot of times gets broken or lost. That's absolutely amazing, and I bought four games from him, which I'll get to in a second. I think I can see them over here. Yeah, that's awesome. I, like, thank you for the Turbo Graphics. I've already played and finished Bonk's Adventure, which is hidden inside there. Um, I got one thing here, which is, like, super awesome, my favorite thing, which I'm going to say to right at the end, because that's what you do in these videos. And don't skip ahead right now, because there's a lot more to come. <laughs> but this thing is my all-time want gem favorite thing that I've always wanted, my holy grail, which I've wanted to start, wanted to have since I started collecting, and way before that. I reckon it's probably the first thing you told me about when, you know, we started doing this together. Like, you told me, this is what I want, like. And I actually managed to pick it up. Yeah. In Seattle, there's a chain of stores called Pink Gorilla, which do a lot of import games and a lot of cheap buying and selling. I managed to buy the Zelda Double Disc, which I don't think we got a power release of, I'm not too sure. It's Ocarina of Time, Ocarina of Time Master Quest. For those who don't know, Master Quest is like a mixed up variant version of Ocarina of Time. It's meant to be a little harder and a different experience. So that's all complete. I bought this for 30 bucks, which I thought was a really good deal. One of the more bigger ticket items. I don't usually spend more than 10 bucks on anything. So, you know, games, I mean. So that I thought that was a really good deal for 30 and I look forward to playing it. 
um, Enter the Matrix. I bought this because it's actually one of my favorite games, even though it's a, it's a little crappy now, it didn't age well. But I bought it for the cover because we didn't we didn't have a fancy look at that yeah. fancy moving cover. The Incredibles was two dollars. I was just trying to pick up GameCube games to play on the GameCube that I bought. I bought Mario Superstar Baseball because we didn't get this here because we're not big on baseball. I'm pretty sure we didn't get this here. I've no, never seen it. So. Bank and Chaos or Bank and Kaidos or however you want to pronounce it is a game I've wanted since I was really young. And even when I was young, it never went under 30 bucks, which was a lot when I was a kid. And as I grew up, it got more and more expensive. So I was on the lookout for this while I was in America, and I found it for 10 bucks, which is still a great deal because it's worth 20. And then the sequel, the sequel, which is actually wasn't released here. This definitely is North American and Japanese release only. This is around 50 bucks. I managed to buy it for 30. It's complete and it's sexy. And that took me the whole last day of Portland Retro Gaming Expo because I was having with everyone for the entire two days. At least three different stores had that game, and no one would go on to 50. And on the last day, I'm like, look, I'm Australian. I'm broke. I need this game. It's the last day. <laughs> and they're like, okay. Super Derek gave me those two for free. They're actually PAL games that he found at a Goodwill or something. And then Knights into Dream, Knights Journey of Dreams, I found, which is like a two dollar game. I found it for three dollars, and I thought it was going to be a super good deal because I was like, in my country, this would be a super good deal, but not in America, apparently. Mm. Do you want to check the camera again? No, I've got a timer, bro. Oh, really? You're yeah. timing it? We got fucking two minutes. We got two minutes. Yeah. I'm gonna two, two minutes. Wait, well, right, I can start again. No, it's okay. I just gotta find someone to start stacking these things. Oh. Okay. Um, I guess I'll go through some NES stuff right now because let's not lie, this is pretty much the reason why we're all here is for <laughs> NES. Um, if it's not the reason you're here, I'm sorry, you have to sit through about 60 NES <laughs> games right now, so maybe skip ahead a little bit if you don't like NES games. I'm just going to read these out really quick, I'm not going to show them to the camera because I don't have time. Tiny Toons Adventures, Back to the Future 2 and 3, Where's Waldo, Rocket Ranger, Dragon Power, which is actually Dragon Ball but renamed Dragon Power for North America, Highlight, which I bought because of Super Derek's review. Most of these, by the way, came from Billy Mac and various other people in Florida because a lot of those games were $2 and under, um, and under as in like $1 or $2. Um, some were even free if I was lucky enough. Most were like around $2 or $3 mark. A couple were $5, like Renegade, which I, which I which heard isn't a, exactly a common game, but it's not uncommon. So I didn't buy any NES games over 5 bucks, and if I did, I'll tell you which ones they were. There was about three of them, like Contra, which I'll get to. Um, baseball, I don't even know. Spy vs. Spy, Adventures of Lolo. This was ten dollars. No, this was no, this was five dollars. It was nine, but I had it down to five. That was from Video Game Wizard Two. Crystalis, another game I bought because of Super Derek. Castle Quest. Yonoid was given to me for free by Super Derek. Ooh, gross. Um, Pow, that went with the the case. That was the Blades of Steel. That they both have the boxes I showed earlier. One was from Grimsy. One was from Super Derek. Matty J, a fantastic man who also has a channel, go check out Matty J. He made a really nice Portland um, Gaming Expo video actually where he filmed me buying this. So go check him out. He gave me Life Force and Gauntlet in the middle of Ground Control, which is a barcade in Portland. Um, which we, we all had a lot of fun at. Me, Metal Jesus, Alpha, Happy, we all got drunk there together at least once. If you're underage, don't drink. I don't want to like come across as someone that supports drinking. No. Don't drink, stay in school. Um, Stinger, Burger Time, Kung Fu Heroes, Adventures in the Magic Kingdom, Back to the Future, if any of these have a good story I'd tell it, but most of them don't, Eight Eyes, um, Section Z, Track and Field, the reason why I bought these, unless they were like literally a dollar, and I've, I feel like I'm making good time here, I've only had to stop the camera twice, and I'm, I'm getting close to being done, um, kind of. So as I was saying, a lot of these, I just, I just bought them because, oh actually the reason why I bought them is I looked for two things, I looked for, no I looked for a few things, no I looked for two things mostly, anything with Capcom, I bought, if it was under like five bucks, and anything with a good cover I bought, if it looked good I bought it, we only got 200 NES games in Australia, yeah. there's 800 Aww. in America, I don't know what most of these are, to be honest, so I bought mostly on label, by Capcom, or if I actually knew what it was and I had some nostalgia for it. This was one actually, which wasn't what I was leading up to, but Total Recall, which is a really bad game. I had a lot of nostalgia for it, had it when I was a kid, so I picked it up, it was like $2. Russian Attack, Target Renegade, you might notice a lot of these are Taito games as well, because Taito makes a lot of good titles. Mickey Mouse Cafe, Chip and Dale, uh, where am I in this game? These stacks are going to start to fall all over the place. Yeah. Nice. Friday the 13th, Wrestlemania, now for those of you who know the titties on a Hulkster story, I actually bought this in Aaron Kocharski's store, so without actually having the official T's on a holster, that's pretty much as close as you can get. 
that story means absolutely nothing to so many people and probably even you. Yeah. <laughs> it's, um, yeah it's, you have to be around Scott's channel to know, and you have to be around a long time ago to know what that story Anyway, Target Haley, Gauntlet 2, Mickey Mousecapade. I, ended up, I turned out that I actually bought two of those, which is the reason why I stopped <laughs> buying NES games when I hit 50, because I knew I was going to start doubling up on what I bought. DuckTales, Monopoly. A lot of these... A lot of these NES games were actually shown in Alpha Omega Sims pickup video. For those of you who haven't seen Alpha Omega Sims channel before, he's an absolutely fantastic channel with 250,000 plus subscribers. So if you're watching me right now, you've definitely seen him at least once in your life. But me, the Game Chasers, Gilly from Retro City Zone, uh, Scott Squatch and his wife, and Alpha did this massive pickups video that went for like an hour. It was absolutely ridiculous, and most of these were shown in there. But go check out that video because that was an amazingly fun video. Cobra Triangle, Black Manta, Glove Ball, Street Fighter 2010, which is great, Football. By the way, I love you, Alpha. You are such a sexy human being. And if you're watching this right now, I want you to say Rock Dick Drop in the comment section below. Target Heli again. See, I doubled up twice. Super Pit, Frul, Rygar, Bayou Billy, Bayou Billy, Tetris 2. We actually all signed a copy of Bayou Billy at the Wagon Wheel Free Market with Scott, I said free market, for um, Billy McDonald, by you Billy, Billy McDonald, Billy McDonald being the guy that gave me the Turbo Graphics, it actually has a channel, you should go check it out, Simon's Quest, um, Contra, that was a game that I paid, I think, 10 for, or 12 for, 10 for, I really wanted Contra, Sky Shark, Operation Wolf, Boy in His Blob, thank you to everyone who's actually sat through this video, and you actually, I mean, the pickup videos aren't exactly insanely interesting, yes, this is an insanely interesting one, because I'm back from America, y'all, <laughs> but I, I really appreciate those of you who sit through 36 minute long videos or however long this gets and leave a like and leave a comment at the end of it. Actually sit through the whole thing. So if you've sat through this whole thing to this point, say something like, say Cho down below because that seems to be the trending thing from the last time I said something like that. And at the end I'll give you something else to say and just thank you for sitting in these videos. Little Nemo Dream Master, which is a great name for a penis. Tailspin, which also isn't a bad one. Ghosts and Goblins, the three pack Mario, Dark Hunt, Track and Field. Oh, that was the end of the NES games. Actually, no, there's one more. Beetlejuice, which was free and came in its own little plastic case. Now, that's all the NES games. So, my favourite one out of all of that would probably be the Contra, and then Simon's Quest 2, and then maybe Tiny Toons. I'm not quite sure. Boy and His Blob's really awesome. I don't want to cover your face. You, you figure that out. Um, six Pack Genesis. Actually, that's empty. I've got the six pack up there at home, which I'll add to it later. That came from a flea market. No, that came from a garage sale. Here's an interesting tidbit. I got everything home hassle-free, absolutely nothing broke. I think apart from this, the only thing that even came close to being broke was one PS2 game so far I've noticed has the little connectors that hold the disc in. One of those connectors came loose. The other, the others are fine. It's this was like the that only thing that broke, a copy of Mother 3, a repo copy that, um, that Derek gave me for free. This is the only thing that broke, and Derek, I'm so sorry, I was just must be in a shit position but the case is completely wrecked, and it's actually gone through to the artwork a little bit. I can switch the case out, it will look absolutely fine, even that will blend in fine, the game will work fine, everything is fine, it just really sucks that that had to happen, it was the only thing that broke. Mm. Um, but I mean, I can always get another label printed out, it, was just a pr it wasn't like official artwork or anything, I've so it's fine. i another case like this. So do I got punch. Um, there was a guy at Portland actually, who had a stall that was so cheap, that I bought most of these, all of these from actually, these DS games and my, some of my PS2 games for under five bucks. He was so cheap that he almost sold out on the first day on the Friday before the convention was even open. Because wow. the other, other, other goers there, like people like me or people that own stalls, were trying to buy him out. And then on Saturday, with all the people that came through, he, was, he wasn't there Sunday, he was gone. And the reason being was, and I know you didn't watch the video, and I asked Derek the question, so I'll ask you the question. Still copy of Legendary Super, Super Warriors, how much would you, you guess this would be? Uh, at a store and say at least like 20 bucks. Yeah, it was $8. Wow. And I got him down to 5 He would haggle. He would haggle on everything and anything. Um, and I got Lux Pain because it was marked at a dollar. I don't even know what this game is. It's just a cool looking RPG, but it was a dollar. And he actually ended up giving it to me for free. Children of Mana, Mystical Star Sign, Jump, Super Superstars. For those of you who sat through my last video, I talked about all of those, so I'm not going to talk about them again right now. And Blue Dragon Plus. So those are all really, really cheap. Um, okay, let's go through, no, really quickly, Retro Palooza, I think the first things I bought at Retro Palooza were Drag Legend of Dragoon and Chrono Cross, I got these for 10 bucks each, so I was really happy with that, they were marked for 15 each, 
These games are both well over $100 here. Um, Chrono Cross might not quite be over 100 I know this is about 150 But either way, they're really expensive, and you get them for both $10, and now I can play them on my, on my PS2. Here it is. On my American PS2, which I picked up. Um, that makes me really happy. And I also got that at, from Jeremy, again, Jeremy Stubbs, at the very first convention I went to, which was the Fanboy Expo, the Fanboy Convention, something like that, up in Tampa. Um, he hooked me up with a really sweet deal that included that in it and a bunch of other stuff. How are we going on time there, Chrissy? We're, we're good at the moment. We've got two and a half minutes. I haven't talked this fast, ever. <laughs> okay, let's go through... Um, Alright, go through some of these manuals real quick, then we'll go through the PS2 games, which are the last set of games that we've got quite a few of, and then the very last final Epic console. Um, actually, oh my god, when you stop the camera again, can you grab yeah. those? These are the type of graphic games I picked up from Billy McDonald. Ballistics, um, Keith Courage is in there, and Alien Crush is underneath it. And then in um, a store called the Pink Gorilla Store, I actually found Keith Courage for 7 bucks complete. So now I have two Keith Courages and might be looking at getting rid of that one. Maybe I can use it for trades. Who knows? Chris right now is grabbing from the floor um, the Atari games that I bought for him while I was over there. Most of them came from the, flag the, the Wagon Wheel Flea Market. Um, the other couple, I'm not quite sure where they came from. I think Billy McDonald might have given me one just for free to give to Chris. I'm not sure what it was. Um, yeah. Billy, actually, Billy Mac told me he brought something to Portland to give to you. And I never, I never picked it up. Yeah. So he was trying to give you. Might something. have been Waterworld. Actually, we were talking about Waterworld, but there was great. There was a lot of shit going on. You know, you know that you know that Waterworld game. Yeah. He actually tried to give to me to give to you right after you gave me Turbo Graphics. I, oh no! I couldn't take it. I know it was for you. <laughs> no, no, that's fair enough. Like, but yeah, I get that. It man. had hundred dollars marked on it. Yeah. He just no, gave that me. game is worth hundred bucks. I was so. like, I, 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 I know it's not even for me, and I feel bad for like saying, no, I don't want Chris's <laughs> game. I just couldn't do it. Yeah, no, that's cool. Man. If he had pushed me, I would have done it, but he wasn't pushing. I, I mean, this might, I should have got Tyler's ages ago. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, so Star Wars, the arcade game, Wizard of War. Yeah. I don't know who cares. Uh, Super Breakout. Oh, that's Space Invaders as well. That actually oh, wow, has the, the, uh, the, yeah. the clip-in in the back, which I'm not sure what you do with that. I think you put it, you over, put the it over the controller. The controller. They're yeah. really shitty controllers. They've got nine buttons like yeah. that. Um, yeah, that's cool. I didn't notice that before. Uh, Pac-Man. Something's loose in there. Centipede and Galaxian. Sorry, I'm going slow. I'm not your... That's okay, you're hungry, but we'll forgive you. Um, I bought a Playboy at the very first convention I went to, and the reason behind it was it's actually signed by Charlie something, I can't remember right now, off the top of my head, who does the artwork for Walking Dead books. In this uh, Playboy magazine, there's an exclusive Michonne, Michonne origin story that you can't see anywhere else. This is what I was told by the guy selling it to me. Um, I bought this for, I think it was, I think you wanted 20 for it. I'm Australian, so I got them down to 10 bucks. <laughs> Even if you can read that comic somewhere else, I think it's awesome that I have a Playboy that has the comic in it that's signed by the guy who draws yeah. the comic. So, that either cool. way, I'm a huge Walking Dead fan, and I absolutely love that. And he, he threw in this little Walking Dead, the official magazine issue one. So, that's cool. I bought a Playboy. Um, there are, There is boobies in there. Alright, let's go to the PS2 games. Straight off the bat, we've got... Tyler Tasmanian Tiger 3, Devil May Cry 2. Now the reason that you're behind me buying a lot of these PS2 games were our PS2 games, which Chris actually bought me a present, Tyler Tasmanian Tiger 3, yeah. which is worth a lot more here, so it doesn't yeah. matter that I've got two copies of it. That's what the spines look like for every single PS2 game. Pow, European, that's what the spines look like, and they're horrible, they're disgusting, they look boring, boring as hell when they're stacked together. You can't see them because they're down mm. there on the bottom floor because they're out of the way. So I wanted to rebuy a lot of my favourite games with good spines, like Devil May Cry 2, etc. Um, and games that I weren't rebuying were games I, that are really expensive in Australia, or they were really cool looking RPGs that I managed to buy really cheap, like Xenosaga. Uh, I also got Jack 2. Jack 2 actually came in a lot that um, Brendan gave me with the, the Legend of Zelda and Secret of, Evermore, Secret of Evermore earlier. He gave me this big stack of PS2 games. Thank you so much for that. So a lot of these came from that, but a lot of them were also really cheap, and I'll mention them if they were specifically cheap that I bought. Maximo came from him, Zone of the Enders came from him, Exile, I found that at a Goodwill for like a dollar or something. Um, Prime for the Rapper, again a dollar, which is like a dollar game anyway. Onimusha, which I bought on Super Derek's recommendation, because he knows that I love Capcom, and he knows that I love Devil May Cry, and this is pretty much Devil May Cry, but like in a different time setting. And, and feudal Japan or something, whatever you pronounce, how you pronounce it? Feudal. Feudal. Okay. 
I, I'm not good with history, don't laugh at me. I play video <laughs> games, I don't go to school. Play more history video games. Uh, yeah, I should. Well, I'm about to. Devil May Cry, another one of my favorites. Radi Radiata Stories, sorry if I pronounced that wrong. It looks absolutely amazing. I picked it up because it was cheap. It doesn't actually say the price on it. Indigo Prophecy, that was um, like Heavy Rain and the people that make Beyond, that was the first okay. game they made. I bought that for $3 from Scott. Yeah, we might Dark Cloud 1 and 2 weren't released in Australia. Dark Chronicle, which is Dark Cloud 2, people have been telling me it was released in Australia, but I am pretty determined on the fact that it wasn't. You c please correct me if I'm wrong because I don't carry the weight. This was a lot cheaper, this was only 20 bucks, and the game's worth about 35 in America, so I think here it's worth like 80. Dark Chronicle, I'm pretty sure it was only released in Europe and released in New Zealand. So, I bought that, and Dark Cloud 1, which is here somewhere, um, yeah, here it is, found that. This actually took me the entire trip to find. I couldn't yeah. find it under 25 bucks with a manual, and I bought Shit. it for $10 in the end at um, Portland. Kingdom Hearts Re Chain of Memories, and this game wasn't released here. This was, in, this was released in between Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2. Um, it's a port from the, the Game Boy version, or the DS, I can't remember. Um, yeah, we didn't get that, so I found that for 10 bucks as well. Devil May Cry 1. Devil May Cry is like one of my favorite series of games on the PlayStation. Contra Shattered Dreams, Shattered Dreams which is a really good Contra game. Primal, because it was $1 at that cheap guy at Portland. Um, Star Ocean, this was $7 complete in a nice little book thing, which again was the guy at Portland selling cheap stuff. That came, Final Fantasy came from the guy who gave me a bunch of free stuff. Devil May Cry 3. Try and push these over on top of the Playboy. Xenosaga, Onimusha, Castlevania. I played some Castlevania, that plays like Devil May Cry as well, really enjoyable. That'll get started two. Kingdom Hearts, Grim Adventures of whatever. Bully, which actually has a nice embossed thing on the front, which we didn't get an embossed version. Onimusha 2. Oh god. Rogue Galaxy, I got that for 10 bucks. It's meant to be a really, really enjoyable RPG, and I love the, the style of the artwork. A lot of these games I haven't played before, that's why I bought them. I can never pronounce that, so if you can't pronounce it, then we're screwed. Not too. It's Shin no, it's Shin Shinamuni Tensai. Shin oh, the top one. I can't pronounce yeah, it. Yeah, I'm not going to try People it. will hate me for it. I've never been able to do it. Monkey Island, which is one of my favorite series of games. Gum, which is fantastic. Came in that free stack of games from Brendan. Another Exile. Another Final Fantasy. That's all the PS2 games. All right, so. Out of room. Completely out of room. Yeah. I bought a, a walkthrough for Twilight Princess. This is what actually weighed down my luggage the most. <laughs> this is probably about 50 pounds right here. Um, our strategy guides pounds now. Our Jesus. strategy guides can go over like what, twenty bucks. Yeah, ours are ridiculous. These are like all under five. Wow. So without going through too many of them, I got both Kingdom Hearts, uh, Final Fantasy. Well, I'm here now just because of all of them. Um, Smash Bros. Brawl, Star Fox Adventures, um, Zelda Phantom Hourglass. Sorry if I'm rubbing on the mic right now and you can't hear me. Um, Pokemon. Don't know which one. Final Fantasy IX, my favorite Final Fantasy. Spirit Tracks. Can you put those? I don't know. Okay. Final time. Thank you for watching through this video. There is one more thing I'm about to show you, and it's my absolute prized possession from this entire trip. The thing I've wanted since I saw it um, years ago, when I don't even know how I found out about it because it was before I cared about collecting, before I cared about you know anything interesting to do with video games. I was just a kid that bought video games, and that was all I cared about. GameCube is by far my favorite console. I don't care what anyone says, it is. It has so many great games, and every game that failed in other consoles, like Taxi... Um, what's that game called? Crazy Taxi. Crazy Taxi, my god. <laughs> Crazy Taxi, which didn't have a chance to shine on the Dreamcast because the Dreamcast didn't do very well. GameCube was like, we'll pick that up. Resident Evil was fantastic games on the PlayStation. GameCube was like, you know what, we're going to make those better. GameCube made a lot of things better, it brought a lot of good things to the gaming world, and for that reason, I love the GameCube, and to get a Panasonic Q was absolutely amazing for me, I, I, it blew my mind, after I bought it the entire time, I was like, I have a Panasonic Q, I can't <laughs> believe this. The story behind me getting this, firstly, I'll, I'll tell it really quick, I have sco I had Sculptor's Cut for the N64, which I bought from Tyler for 40 bucks, um, probably shouldn't have told you what I paid for it, because now I'm going to seem like a scumbag, but... Terry and Tyler really, really, really wanted the game from Luigi Freakout. Um, Tyler harassed me about it for months before I went, bring Sculptor's Cup, bring Sculptor's Cup, bring Sculptor's Cup. <laughs> I brought it, I didn't know if he was going to get it. I saw this bad boy at a, at a stall, and I said, just out of curiosity, because it was marked for 300, just out of curiosity, would you do trade-ins? And he's like, what do you have? I said, Sculptor's Cup. He said, I'll give you 170 for it. Um, now, that's a really good deal, because the game's only worth around 200, 220. 
Um, so I went to t Terry and Tyler and I'm like, listen, if they want 170, if you do me like 140 and maybe give me like a Rob the Robot or something, you guys can have it. I'll go pay them in cash. I'll try and get it down. And they were ecstatic at that point. They were like, yeah, absolutely. We'll do that. Um, I didn't end up getting a Rob. We forgot to do the whole <laughs> Rob transaction, but he ended up giving me the extra 20 bucks anyway for the 170. I went straight to the booth. I'm like, look, I was playing sheepish at that point. I'm like, look, you know, uh, I have like 275 cash. And they were like, all right, let's do that. So here it is, 275. I'm gonna do a whole video on this bad boy, maybe like a five minute video review or whatever. I'm gonna talk through the fact that there's actually a screen up here that says hello and goodbye when you turn it on and tells you if you're sat on game, if you're sat on DVDs. It can play DVDs, it can play CDs. It has a jack for subwoofer. It's got HD, like 720 output if you have the component cables, which are really expensive. It, it does everything, it's awesome, it's amazing. Very brief history on it, it was released in Japan only, made by Panasonic, they had the rights to make one because they made the disc trays for the GameCube. I'll talk about it more in its own video, in fact if that video comes up anytime soon I'll link it here somewhere, but there it is, my shining gem. Now I need to find something else that I'm looking for because, I mean, you're, I, you're I, I, I'm... Okay, so the camera cut out, but as it, oh Chris, as it cut out we actually realised that we forgot something and that was, ta-da! Now, for those who actually knew that I had this, I found this at that garage sale with Scott for 40 bucks and all that. There was a bunch of them, and I managed to keep this one. I only kept one because, well, A, it was the best one, and B, we weren't sure if I was going to logically get this home. Scott was 100% 100, 100 sure it was going to break, and a lot of people we told about it were placing bets on if it was going to break. <laughs> um, here it is. It made it. I wedged yeah. it really well. I took really good care of it. I wrapped it in clothes. It made it home. It's how I found it, and I'm going to put this somewhere really special, so... Do you want to just hold that for a sec? That's everything. When the camera cut out, we're talking about Chris's channel. Yeah. So, go check out his channel. Like, he hasn't had a chance to speak here, so if you actually want to hear his voice... <laughs> Hi. <laughs> go check out his channel, because he talks a lot more there. We want yeah. to get this done really quickly. Um, it's great to be back in Australia. It's great to be back with Chris. Um, I... I, I'm 100% determined right now, and I know it's going to upset a lot of people that live in Australia, and a lot of my friends. It won't upset you because you're going to come with me. Yeah. <laughs> find a way to get you there, at least for the first year. Yeah. I'm going to move to... It's, I'm dead set. I'm going to do it. I'm going to move to Vancouver. Um, I want to move to America, but it looks like it's way too hard to get into. My goal yeah. right now is to put the focus on at least getting a working visa for a year for Vancouver. I really want to do the same. I want to do it for a little while as well. So, it's, yeah. it's where my heart is right now, and I'm going to try my best to get there. I don't know what I'm going to do with all the games I bought and <laughs> all this stuff. If it ends up finally happening, I guess I'm just going to have to sell most of it or trade it off, yeah. give it to a good home. Um, but that's this is that's it. I'll talk about more about that later. i got nothing else. I'm done. I need to put the stuff on the shelves somehow. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. To everyone that I met on the trip, I love you all. I'll be doing more videos talking about the trip at some point. It'll be a game quest talking about the trip at some point. So... Thank you. I'm really tired. Um, that's it. Cheers, guys. I love you all. Bye. Beat him up. <laughs>